So years ago, this area was completely overgrown. Trees were, it was the rubble pile. And it was decided to create this as a parking area. And there were hazels and brambles and all kinds of things. And we got a digger in and we leveled this out. I'd also created this as a dog kennel. Because uh, when you have German Shepherds, they have to, you have to have a place that they're secure. Anyway, it's turned into a chicken run because of urban foxes. But there was member of my, members of my family who didn't like this area. So I said, okay, I'm going to make it into a very pleasant area. So I sowed this Cotoniaster and all of these plants, they're dry plants all the way through. So for example, there's lavender there. Over here, this is catmint. Um, more lavender, more primrose, um, not primrose, rosemary. So all of these, there's going to be mallows and um, all kinds of, there's honesty that I've been slowly self-seeding. There's these, columbine or ladies bonnet that people sometimes call it. And then this bed here, and you can see the peony is about to do, as well as I planted growers to climb up the cage. This is a clematis called Montana, and later in the year, it's a passion flower. And over here, these are all daisies, which don't mind the dry. Um, yarrow, here's yarrow. So there's artichoke, and this is a climbing rose. I actually have to tie the climbing rose in now. There's, here's honeysuckle, there's fennel, uh, this is the evening primrose seed heads, which I haven't cleared yet, but should. Mind you, wasps are collecting uh, nesting material. Anyway, so that was why I have this as all climbing and beautiful, is to make the parking area, hello kitty, uh, more appealing to uh, family members who didn't like this kind of industrialization. As you can see, I do not spray weed killer. And there's a big thistle there. I'll dig that out because I don't want thistles to take over here. I don't mind the dandelions because generally what I do with the dandelions is I pick them up like that. See, almost all gone. And there's loads here, really big ones, but the chickens absolutely love dandelions. So I'm always picking loads for them to eat. Look at them all fighting over the... Normally I, I throw in loads more. You can see leftovers about the place. But every day when weeding, I uh, look at this. The peony is about to flower. This lily is flowering. And these irises are flowering. And there's loads of columbine. You can see loads of dandelions. But like I said, I just reach in and this is food for the chickens. Rich in vitamins and minerals. Um, so, oh, there we go. So those are two more dandelions to throw in with the chickens. And so I'm growing extra food for the chickens. See, they're loving it. And then this is a area of, that I've planted soft, softer plants or smaller plants. There's uh, the black elder uh, flower. There's um, more spindle. There's lilacs. There's pheasant eye. There's um, sweet uh, chestnuts. There's some beech and oak. And this is an ash tree that was here and another young horse chestnut and a big chestnut. But see, I've planted here is rhubarb. And um, I don't know what this stuff is called. I got it from my cousin years ago. It grows, as you can see, these are its dead spikes and it grows really, really high. So it's, uh, and over here, you can see the, these are my witch hazels, which I love. And then Inca is on my log planter. You chasing bumblebees? 
those are coffee grinds I slowly pile into the area, particularly around the um, witch hazel that likes ericaceous soils. So you can see we strim this area because I don't want the ground elder to completely take over. This is ground elder because that it, it can monopolize an area and it was monopolizing here. And I'd much prefer to have things that bees love like this. The bees absolutely love this. At the moment, the trees are humming with them. Um, bear, really? Everybody's getting up on the planter. You're really a funny set of dogs, aren't you? Really? <laughs> and then, see, there's other things that are growing here that I've planted out from the garden that um, when weeding a bit at bed that I want to put more stuff in. Like these are uh, geraniums, more geraniums. Here's a uh, columbine. Here's a um, catmint. This smells delicious. Um, oh, I'm being stupid. I can't remember what it's called. There's a holly here, which isn't feeling very well. I think I've got to give it some manure. Uh, and you can see the wonderful cow parsley there. I prefer cow parsley to ground elder. Ground elder just takes over. Uh, and also I've sp uh, strummed back to get rid of um, uh, nettles. You can see there's a pile of nettles over there. But... We can't strim over there yet. Let me get past. This has beautiful, delicate yellow blooms in um, earlier in the year. I love this. Can't wait till it grows bigger. Anyway, if you come down here, you see the nettles are strum, but you get to here, and these, that, this here, that is the snowdrops. So we need to leave the snowdrops leaves until they go yellow. You can see they're beginning to go yellow. This is that bank of snowdrops. I was given a small bunch six years ago, seven years ago, of these big snowdrops. And they reproduce and reproduce. So I've now spread, and I also sowed them and grew them from seed. And I've spread that whole bank. If you've been with me since earlier, um, I have posted growing snowdrops from seed, but look at that. All in there, those are all the snowdrops. But you can see how the ground elder and nettles have taken over. And I would prefer it to have cow parsley. Cow parsley is a better biodiversity contributor than, um, uh, than ground elder. And I have huge patches of nettles elsewhere on the farm, so I don't want to have nettles everywhere, just in areas, particular areas, because I want more biodiversity. So that gives you a small little round about the parking area. And um, look at this old log that we dumped here, and it's got a foxglove growing out of it, some cat mint, some um, cow parsley. This the chickens love as well. I'm always picking cleavers for the chickens because they love them. This holly is so not well. And of course, Bear is climbing on doing his thing. If it's not a tree, it's a trunk. Isn't that right? Oh, you're so, oh, look, he has a bit of white of cow parsley on his nose. You're such a good boy. So that gives you a little window into the history of what I've been doing here and trying to create it beautiful. And I must say that in the spring with the clematis going around the hen run, it's just gorgeous. And then the passion flower later on. So then we walk around here. Oh, and the really exciting thing is that soon I will have the wisteria will come around. The wisteria, look, this is from the wisteria that's here in the cottage. And I've got it going over the wall or around the wall. And soon, I'm hoping one day for the wisteria to cover this wall and so it meets the red of the tulips. I think that'll be gorgeous. So another couple of years 
of winding stuff with wire and the tulips and the wisteria will be together and it'll be glorious. Anyway, this wisteria is now 10 or 11 years old. I've lost track. And uh, it starts here and it goes around that way and it's going around this way and I've got some of it's going around that way so it'll do the wall in the parking area and going around this way to do the lean-to shed where the rubbish is. So that's, yeah, slowly but surely over the years um, increasing the biodiversity and the beauty of the location. Part of the management is for beauty and part of it is for biodiversity. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? You're just so excited. You're just so excited. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, you're jealous. Oh, you're jealous. Oh. 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 And oven mitt's been helpful. Haven't you, kitty? It's like, oh, can't be bothered. Yeah. Oh, you're going away. Can I say hello? Hello. Yes. My mother's favorite animal is oven mitt. Yes. Ha, ha, ha.